In this episode, we'll take a look at how to make a title card for your own animations, including what information to include and ways to make them engaging and intriguing, without giving away too many spoilers. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tipta and welcome back to the how to create an animation series. Last episode we looked at creating the backgrounds for our animation so if you haven't watched that episode yet you can do so here. If you have watched it, great. Let's talk about title cards. You see a title card at the beginning of most animated shows on TV. Whilst not strictly necessary, they are a great way to tease the upcoming content and intrigue the audience, but they also serve as a way to give pride of place to the hardworking animators, storyboarders, writers, and other crew that have invested their blood, sweat, and tears into making the damn animation in the first place. Title cards can be pretty simple, consisting of just one image, or can be a succession of images, but basically serve as a pre-roll credit sequence. They have a few parameters that are usually included, so let's go through them now. They include the name of the animation, an illustration that teases the content without giving too much away, the credits, usually writer, director, and or lead animators, but can include storyboarders, in-betweeners, voice artists, etc., and theme music or a musical sting to connect the title card to the first scene of the animation. The most important thing to get right when making a title card is the theme. Usually, the title and credits aren't just text on a page, but rather part of the artwork itself. Take this Ren and Stimpy title card as an example. Here, Mad Dog Hoek is both the title of the animation and the main antagonist. These are tied together by printing it across a hulking figure's back, with Ren and Stimpy cowering between his legs. This gives us an idea of what the animation will be about, the name of the animation, and the main characters all in a single image. The text then flashes in and out to reveal all of the people that worked on the animation. So this is an example of a great title card with strong imagery and efficiency, which is super important, especially for a show like Ren and Stimpy, which had a budget of two pieces of wet tissue paper, an IOU for 50p, and a deadline of yesterday, goddammit, don't make me tell you again. Let's look at another example, this time from the older Looney Tunes cartoons. Here, the budget was even more shoestring. A plain colour background using actual cutouts from the episode, just a title and a legal disclaimer. Not exactly a work of art, and basically gives no information about the upcoming episode, but it is very much representative of their era and company. I love Looney Tunes. These title cards are rubbish. But they do have one thing going for them. Each week, you see the same thing, and that's great for branding. Final example, this time from Fairly Odd Parents. The older episodes would have a custom illustration with the title of the animation and a bit of repetition and branding with the prefix the Fairly Odd Parents in dot dot dot. Lower budget and efficient, which is great, but no shout out for the crew, which isn't as good. Later episodes would include pre-roll credits over a very similar style illustration, which would do a great job teasing the upcoming episode, combining the best of both worlds. Fairly Old Parents has some of my favourite title cards of all time. This is very much the era of animation that I grew up with, and the hyper-stylized art style really stands out to me as unique and engaging. So, with all of that information in mind, let's take a look at making our own title card. I think, as I'm literally the only person involved, we can dispense with the full credit sequence and just have a made by Matthew Fryer credit. So let's focus on the title and illustration, then tack the credit on somewhere. Well, the title is Just Add Water. It's enigmatic, recognizable as a global phrase, and relates to the story without giving away any real information. So that's easy enough. For the illustration, we need to find a cool way to incorporate the key themes and ideas from the episode without spoiling the gag. Things like Timmy, the main character, the dino, water, bath, damage to the house, childhood toys. Some of these are more important than others. We want to tease, so damage to the house is a bit explicit. Let's remove that. Bath and water can be combined to just water, I think. Timmy isn't a recognisable character or brand, and I think the dino is a more powerful image, so we'll leave Timmy in the list, but I think focusing on the dino is a good idea. Childhood toys is redundant if we're not showing an environment, so that just leaves us with... Timmy, the dino, and water. These three things, coupled with our knowledge of the story, should give us enough to work with. Start by throwing ideas down on paper, rough as possible. Don't worry about merging notes and sketches at this stage, just get down anything you think could work. And remember, if you can incorporate the title into the artwork in some way, that's even better. 
Maybe the words just add water are written in puddles of water on a tiled floor, with the dino poking in at the edge, hinting at bathrooms and toys. Maybe it's a close-up of Timmy's face holding the dino in front of him, but instead of pupils he has the title words in each eye. This is interesting and very much reminiscent of Ren and Stimpy, but there's no mention of water. How about the dino bobbing about in the bath with the title words written in bubbles? That gets the idea of the bath and water all in there at once. No Timmy though. Maybe it's Timmy's head poking out of the bottom of the frame with the dino on top of his head and the title written above him. Good image, but the title isn't incorporated into the artwork. Not a deal breaker of course, but it is a shame. Once you've got a sketch, run with it. I won't tell you how to draw an illustration, that's kind of up to your style, but I will say this. Try to follow the style of your animation somewhat, but with a little bit of extra detail and polish. Simple and similar to the actual animation style, but a little bit more detailed, because we don't have to make it move. And that's really all there is to it. Quite a simple little tutorial today, but one that I find interesting, and it serves as a chance to show you some great title cards which are often an overlooked part of the animation process. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss the next episode in this series. And I'll see you all next time on TipTut. Absolutely massive thank yous to my level two and above members without whom this channel would not be possible. I'd like to wish them a very Merry Christmas and a very Merry Christmas to you all. Click the join button below for exclusive perks and benefits. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.